Well, we've uh, talked about a lot of uh, heavy stuff here, controversial things, but I want to also say that Beachwood has a lot of good things going forward. I think you know that. Businesses with high paying jobs, good schools, variety of housing, and I bet you can name more. So what do you think the state of the city is uh, right now? And we'll start with Mark. Thank you. Um, I, I think the state of the city is excellent. Um, uh, I, I think that uh, we've got thriving businesses. Uh, we still have great portions of Chagrin Highlands to develop, uh, which holds great promise. Uh, the ability to uh, increase our income uh, and our revenue stream through those, and also to increase the value of the properties so that that then filters down to the excellent school system we have. So part of our careful planning is to make sure that those buildings are there. Um, uh, we, are, we are the envy of Northeast Ohio in terms of our city services. Uh, when my dad was hurt and had to get taken to the hospital, I heard about it from the police department before I heard about it from the doctors. Our response time is incredible. Uh, the delivery of these exceptional services, I think, puts us head and shoulders above every other community. We may have some issues to deal with, some of the ones that we've talked about today, but in terms of delivery of exceptional services and an outstanding school system, we're second to none. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Justin? I, I agree with everything that, that Mr. Wachter says. Um, but I think for the city to succeed in the future, we need to look a little bit to the past. And when I was a child in Beachwood, the Commerce Park Mercantile area was really the heart of the city. Chagrin Boulevard was just starting to get going. Science Park didn't exist and Beachwood Place didn't exist. Um, the Commerce Park Mercantile area is in desperate need of an upgrade. Um, that property, unlike the Chagrin Highlands property, is in the city of Beachwood um, schools tax base. Um, when we, unfortunately, when, when companies move or build in Chagrin Highlands, the city schools don't get very much money from that. Most of that goes to the Warrensville High School District. Commerce Park and Mercantile is all in Beachwood. The city needs to assist the property owners there, maybe in conjunction with the schools, on some sort of tax abatement to redevelop the Commerce Park Mercantile area so that uh, though there's, there's a reason to, to build new and, and tear down what's there. It's just not conducive to today's building environment. Okay, thanks. Martin? Well, I, I'm happy with probably 97% of everything we do, and I'm very proud of what we do. And it's a combination of good leadership, good government, location, schools, revenue, business. It's a lot of things mixed in together. But I think there's a lot more we can do, and I think that's the 5% or 3% or whatever that we need to focus on. I'm, I'm very troubled when I pick up Cleveland Magazine, and Cleveland Magazine puts us at 17 in our ranking. So for us to say we're the number one city or we're the premier city, you know, certain rankings just don't give it to us. And I would be happy, you know, Solon I think is two, and I'd like to be one. There's a lot of things we could be doing that we just don't do. I've advocated for four years that we should be broadcasting our meetings. I, we do it 50%. We, we, have, we have our meetings, t uh, we, we tape our meetings. So that's sort of the equivalent of the 1940s radio. In today's technology, technological world, there's no reason we can't be broadcasting. People can watch those meetings on an iPad. Um, Mark talked about po putting the checks on. Again, we're doing 50%. We post a PDF listing of the checks. When the state treasurer has a system that dozens of municipalities are getting on that allows you to search out an online active, interactive search for, for all the checks a, a city uses. There's little projects we've discounted. Uh, we don't do, we, a dog park, there was a suggestion about a dog park, we didn't do that. We sure, certainly could do that for residents. We could help our seniors um, get their trash out when they can't do it. There's little things we could be doing and big things we could be doing. Okay, Martin, thanks. Uh Barbara? Well, I can speak to this being the only person here that hasn't been, on, that isn't currently on city council, hasn't run for city council in the past. I've been spending most of my time the last couple of months going door to door. So I've knocked on more than 2,500 doors probably in the last couple of months. And I can tell you that people are very happy with Beachwood. They talk about the great services that are second to none in services that we offer to seniors and programming to seniors and the low cost that we offer those programming. The recreational facilities are fabulous. People overall in Beachwood are really happy and think it's a great city. They're a little upset by all the news attention on the city because they think it's great and they're a little concerned that they we're getting the bad publicity, but they're very happy living there. 
um, which isn't to say that Beachwood isn't perfect. No city is perfect and there's always room for improvement. Um, people tend to be concerned when I'm walking around the areas in which they live. As Marty mentioned, a lot of people are talking about a dog park. That to them seems to be a bigger issue than a lot of things going on with the mayor. Um, quite honestly, people that live in certain parts of the city are very concerned that there aren't enough street lights. They'd like to have more street lights. They're concerned about safety and making sure that Beachwood stays a safe community. Um, people in the Beacon Concord area are concerned that there aren't crossing guards at Chagrin and they said their kids can't walk to school and bicycle to school. Again, sort of a safety issue. Um, people are concerned about the lack of supervision at the basketball courts. So some of the issues that people in Beachwood are concerned about are not these big global issues. I mean, everyone's concerned about transparency and issues of that sort, but when it comes right down to it, they're concerned about the issues that affect them directly, and those issues are different in different parts of the community, and I think that Beachwood needs to do a better job of engaging the residents, reaching out to the residents, not waiting for them to come to council members, but actually going out into the community and asking them about their issues. Thanks. Brian? Yeah, so, uh, I feel fortunate. I, I, I am currently one of four generations of my family living in Beachwood. So, um, you can imagine the different level of services that each of us take advantage of or appreciate. And, you know, I can tell you across the board, it, it, it's top notch. Uh, it is great for my kids who are learning to walk and starting school. It's great for myself, for my mother who taught in the schools and was recently retired, and my grandmother who lives in one of the uh, assisted living facilities in Beachwood. Um, we do a great job of that. We, we, we cater to different people's needs. Beachwood's much more diverse than people give it credit for. Um, and the community has done a good job, I think over time, of adjusting to the changing population and, and really trying hard to provide those services. What really makes the city great are the people who work in the city. Um, if you've had an opportunity, whether it's a, a, a service uh, member coming to do some work on a, a drain pipe, people have had problems with back, backups. Um, if you're building a house like I did in Beachwood, the building department, if you need the fire department to help with a car seat or an emergency or the police, um, people who are from outside this community who experience those with you, who are there with you, they can't believe the level of service they provide. And it's really those people who deserve leadership that they can look up to and, and that can make them proud and give them something to strive for. They don't deserve the press that they've been getting, that the community's been getting, um, but they're really the cornerstone of, of what makes the community great and the services. Okay, Brian, thanks. Uh, and Michael. Well, uh, I think we all agree. Beach was a great city. Uh, I moved here. I raised my family here. It's a wonderful community, and we certainly have been the top for many years. But as Martin's pointed out, magazines are now starting to rank us a little bit lower. And I think that points to that we're a city in transition. You know, as Barb pointed out, there's a lot of different uh, residents and a lot of different constituencies out there. The, if I look at a grade school photo from when my kids started in Beachwood to today, it's very different, the, the mixture of the community. And those are different needs, and people want different things. We want more recreational opportunities. We just did the, uh, we had the study done, or doing the study with the uh, planning commission that's pointed out that people want a more walkable, more livable city. Uh, or Commerce Park, in dire need of a development plan, something that's been talked about for many years, started and stopped, never really put together a complete master plan for the city of Beachwood. They say there's one, it's the zoning map, uh, but that's something else that's really needed. How do we progress towards that future? How do we make our city in transition? How do we get to be even better than we are today and let everybody know about it? Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, it, it, does anyone have anything to add to that? Uh, Justin. Yeah, a, a couple of things. Um, under the, the, the Cleveland Magazine, um, we've seen this in the past. We've seen Beachwood, I believe, ranked number one at some point and fallen here, or in this case, to 17. They might have been lower, they might have been higher in the past. Whatever the case is, Cleveland Magazine takes lots of different criteria to come up with their rankings. One of them happens to be crime. Um, we have Beachwood Place, we have Pavilion, we have, unfortunately, we have shoplifting. That brings us down a lot. Um, and it's unfortunate, but it also brings us um, a, a, a lot of money. So you take the good with the bad. Um, that's one thing I want to talk about. The other thing is um, talking about broadcasting council meetings. Um, when I was on council, we discussed this. Um, I've done a little bit more research since I was on council too about broadcasting council meetings because it's now 2015 and the idea of fighting broadcasting council meetings may be beyond its, its point. Nonetheless, if you look at a community like Solon, um, Solon has an outstanding system of how they broadcast meetings. And if the city wants to spend the money and do it like Solon, 
then, then so be it. But we have to decide if we want to spend that type of funding. Okay, uh, who else wanted to go? Uh, Mark. Thank you. Um, first, the comments that Justin made originally about the Commerce Park, uh, Mercantile area is spot on. If there's a weakness in our economic development, that's where it is, and that area needs to be revitalized. But there is a master plan, and I think Mr. Silver is aware of it. We've commissioned the master plan with the master with the planning commission of the county. That master plan is to be released soon, and we're all anxious to see what it has to say. So it's not just a zoning map. There's an actual plan that's being presented. With respect to the questions about the checkbook being online, we put the checkbook online when I saw that the, that the treasurer was doing it at the state level. And I asked the mayor to do it, and within a week it was there. It's on there. It's free. I think the Northeast Ohio Media Group reported that the treasurer's version cost the state a million dollars. Well, maybe we're in a PDF version right now and we'll have some more functionality and more transparency there, but right now our checkbook's online. In fact, Mr. Silver's looked at it himself. Uh, the diversity of the city is exciting, and I think that we're all looking forward to being able to accommodate it. Okay, anyone else? Uh, Martin? I, I go back to my original point that um, we're all very proud of this city, and, and our services are excellent, but I used to run into the same situation in schools where we would say we're the best place to learn. And the way you constantly improve yourself, you're never the best at anything, is you look all around you. I went around the country to conferences to look at the best programs in schools around the country. And I think what we don't do is we don't, as councilmen, look at what the best programs are around the state, around the country. I went down to the Ohio Municipal League Conference two years ago, which is sort of our trade union, if you want to call it that. And the, tre the finance director said, I don't know how to write you up because you're the first councilman to go down there. And I think we as council have to really educate ourselves about what else is going on outside of our city. We, we do a wonderful job, but we can always improve. We can always bring more residents into the, the system. We can always find a, a new program to try. We can always try and economize in certain areas. There's a lot we can do if we go out and learn from other cities. Okay, uh, Brian? Yeah, and just going back to this checkbook, I, what we have on the city website right now is not the checkbook online. And, and um, you know, it just so happens the treasurer of the state lives in Beechwood, um, a few doors down from Mr. Walker over here. Um, so I can think of no better city to adopt what he's trying to do than Beechwood. I mean, I see constantly in, in news stories that all over the state he's standing in, in small communities uh, who have adopted the, the treasurer's program, and it doesn't cost the cities a million dollars. It was a cost of the state to set it up so cities could find it accessible. Um, it's a searchable database. It's functional. It's easy for people to use. And, and, and you know, listen, if, if uh, there's no reason uh, when something's like that's available, the city doesn't take advantage of it. To say it's a cost issue, I, I think, is being a little disingenuous with the people in the community. We, we've spent money on, far, on things that, uh, you know, provide far less to the residents and, and to the public than that. Okay, anybody else? I'd like to add to what Murray said is I think it's terribly important to be looking at what other communities are doing. On the boards I serve on, it's very important that we compare what other boards are doing. We take the best of what other suburbs are doing and we can improve upon them. It doesn't mean we have to copy them, but if we stay very insular and just say we can do it this way in Beachwood, this is how we've done it without looking at the other communities and see how they're doing things in certain ways better, I think we're you know, really missing an opportunity. And with certain areas, they're going to be more regionalized and that's kind of a push as boards have sort of collaborated. We're going to be collaborating with other communities more. We need to know what's going on in the other communities and gain the wisdom from some of the things where they've gone through their thought press. We should be going through the same thought presses and again taking the best from what other places are doing and try to incorporate it in Beechwood. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, Michael, would you like to add anything? No, I think we're good. Thank okay. you.